Hi, it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2014, and I'm sitting here with Tim Bray, who's the co-inventor of XML, and he's a keynote speaker here today at uh, the GoToConf. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today, Tim. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your talk and what you're hoping people take home from it? Well, I've been mixed up in my, you know, my most pre most recent job was at Google, and I spent a couple of years in the Android group there, mm -hmm. and then subsequently did work in other areas, and I've become keenly aware of uh, sort of the tension in the marketplace between people who are sort of browser and web technology centric and people who are mobile centric, mm -hmm. and I think there are some really good reasons to worry that the notion of the browser it's lo is losing its centrality <laughs> in the world of app development. And so what I'm going to talk about today is, is that really a problem? Is that actually happening? And, and if so, why? And um, assuming it is happening, is that a problem that we should worry about? Mm -hmm. And if it's a problem we should worry about, then is there anything we could do to, right. to, to, to improve it? Now, this is unscheduled, but I'm also going to take a side trip into privacy. Okay. Because uh, I've been doing a lot of work on that recently, and in the era of Ed Snowden, you know, we should all be worried about that. Yes. You may think you don't have a privacy <laughs> problem in, in your work, but you probably do, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with uh, services that are very popular, like HipChat recently, I don't know if you're familiar with, they had a change in their privacy policy when our one-on-one -on -one chats are able to be exposed to your employer. I mean, even things like, like that. Um, and uh, uh, when you talk, but to go back to your original keynote, when you're talking about browser versus non-browser, are you talking about native apps versus... Yeah, I'm talking about native apps. Okay. You know, increasingly, if somebody's going to build an app, they're actually going to build three apps. They're going to build, uh, you know, a browser version, an iOS version, and an Android version, and that's already a problem because, mm -hmm. you know, you're having to replicate your work multiple times right. to get a result, and who knows, you know, Windows Mobile could get a, a good foothold, and we'd all be doing our work four times in a row. <laughs> yeah. so, so right there, there's a problem. And, um, you know... And then even different form factors. Well, you know, that's just comes with the game. That's actually, uh, you know, not, not the big biggest part of the problem. And whereas, you know, there's a lot of advantages to mobile apps, and people are moving in that direction for reasons, some of which are good, um, you know, there's some downsides to that, too. And uh, we need to, you know, make sure we understand what the upsides and downsides are of having a browser-centric worldview as opposed to a native mobile app-centric worldview, and make the right choices in an intelligent way. And uh, just, you know, to inter interweave that into the privacy, is it a good thing that we're moving towards native apps in versus browser as far as maybe privacy is concerned? Because the reason I ask is, I mean, I know cookies and spying, you know, cross-browser uh, checking of cookies and tracking, that's one thing you can do in a browser, but maybe you wouldn't be able to do it like that in a native app. Yeah, I suppose, but I think that's a, a small issue compared to the big issues, and, and the big issues are, you know, the actual criminals and bad guys mm -hmm. who, are, who are trying to subvert your account and steal your, your, your information and, and your money, uh, and on the other hand, the over-enthusiastic over employees of our governments <laughs> uh, who uh, feel that, you know, everybody would just be safer if... if they knew everything about right. everybody, and why would anybody want privacy unless they were doing something wrong? Right. And I think you know they, they have much bigger tools than cookies. They have you right. know court orders and national security letters for us to worry about. Well, I mean, uh, there was actually a tweet I saw this morning about uh, the amount of data that the NSA has collected was in the order of exabytes, mm -hmm. but it would take right. 358 years to sort it. Uh, that like is there, is there a point where there they just have so much information that it becomes. Well, Google's got way more than that. Oh, okay. And, and Google, you know, can give you sub-second results, okay. results on searching the whole thing. So, you know, that that doesn't really sound like a... a I wouldn't buy that argument. Yeah, I that's... think that if they employ smart people who know, to, who know how to index mm -hmm. things and so on, which they do, um, they, they would be able to make good use of that stuff. So, I mean, that kind of describes that there is a precedent for having extremely large... I mean, we use it every day. It, it, right. It's become a, a household term. You know, grandmothers who've never used a computer, they know to Google for something. Right. Um, and, and they can sift through data like nobody's business. That's right. Why wouldn't the NSA be able to exactly. do that? Um, what, what have you found in particular that maybe isn't something that people are really talking about yet? I mean, Snowden's obviously a, a very popular topic. But. Well, I think we need to buckle down and think about it. I think that to start with, you know, the room I'm talking to today is going to be full of people who build apps. Mm -hmm. And a question I would have for them is, are you really confident that your app will work if I address it with HTTPS URLs mm -hmm. as opposed to HTTP URLs? <laughs> Even better, you know, does your work automatically, does your app, app 
automatically work with HTTPS only. Right. Because if you do that, then you've removed you know one huge window of vulnerability, ranging which is uh, open to anybody from the NSA to mm -hmm. some guy running fire sheep in a coffee shop. Right. And and, and I think it's you know it's it, it's incumbent upon the app builders to take a big piece of the responsibility for preserving the privacy mm -hmm. of the people who use it. And that means they not only need to do the obvious things like use HTTPS, mm -hmm. they need to think very carefully about you know what information they gather about pe about people, what they store about people what they tell people, um, what their policy is as regards uh, legal demands that they receive. Mm -hmm. And they need to be clear about that stuff And, and because um, laziness produces a really bad result by yeah. default. Well, and I, you know, having been guilty of that myself, as far as looking at the expedient problem like uh, over the last few years, uh, or several years ago, XML was the de facto way to exchange information but over the last couple of years, JSON has kind of become uh, in, uh, more popular. And there's, I've heard pros and cons about uh, adopting uh, a very strict uh, semantic language like XML that can, ha or, excuse me, a, a more easily correct description of a language through XML versus kind of a loosey-goosey uh, JSON. Is, is that something maybe that's indicative of the way we're approaching writing applications at this point where we're just like, what is the least amount of effort I need to do to push data over the wire? Should we be stepping back and really thinking more about how we're pushing stuff over well, the wire? Well, you, you may be right, but that's okay. I mean, there's so much work to do that we should all be trying to do the simplest thing that could possibly work. You know, right. do things in, in, in the simplest way that it could work. Then you worry about your constraints. And as regards XML versus JSON, I mean, JSON is clearly, clearly superior if you're exchanging, you know, database records right. and, you know, file updates and, and that kind of stuff. If you're exchanging, you know, blog posts or, yeah. you know, credit reports or medical health records, XML wins for that. So right. so that they have, you know, different areas of strength. Um, but, you know, I would worry not so much about the, you know, the form of the content, whether it's XML mm -hmm. or JSON. I'd worry about, is it traveling safely across the network right. in a way that somebody who's using, using my app can be really, really sure that they're connecting to me, not to somebody mm -hmm. else, and that uh, nobody else can, can watch the stuff going along. And then, having established that, sort of the, the bare minimum barrier to entry, uh, then you have to answer questions like, okay, what, if I use your app, what information are you gathering about me? Mm -hmm. How are you protecting it? Um, under what conditions will you release it and to whom? And, and you know, you could write the, the real big takeaway in letters of fire 50 feet high, and, it's, and they say, don't surprise me. Right. You know, if you people are end up getting a nasty surprise about what you're doing with their data, the results will be really bad for you, and you also you really want to avoid that. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate it. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.